Um, so I know there are a lot of programs that you would have to interview. Uh, there are some that obviously you don't have to interview, but with top programs, very competitive programs, you would eventually have to interview for, for those slots. Uh, what should applicants expect during the interview process? Oh, great question. Um, the annoying answer, of course, is that it depends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it depends on who you are interviewing with. So sometimes you would interview with a committee, a graduate committee, and maybe someone on that committee would be your advisor and maybe not. But that committee would be making decisions for the whole program. They bring in maybe a cohort of students. So in that case, they'll probably ask more general questions about what interests you about grad school, kind of your intellectual preparation for it, um, and why that institution. Other times, um, you'll interview directly with the mentor or the advisor who you'd be working with. And that's a very different interview because um, personally for me, when I interview prospective students, I'm looking to see their fit. They're fit for my lab group. Do they bring um, a unique perspective? Do they have the ability to communicate what they want to say? Um, are they willing to learn? Can they think on their feet? Um, so it's really going to depend on, on who's interviewing you. And I would say the best way to prepare for that is to just ask. Um, there's nothing wrong if it's not clear from the invitation email. Asking and saying, thank you so much for this invitation to interview. Could you tell me who I will be interviewing with during yeah. this time? Yeah. Just so I can prepare. You can even ask, do you have, um, is there something in particular I should prepare for this interview? Um, and when I get that question, I'll usually reply back, oh, you're going to interview with just me and here, and I'll send a list of questions maybe that I had from their application left. And I'll kind of give the candidate a heads up about what I want to talk about. Um, and there's nothing wrong with asking that. Yeah. The worst they say is, oh, nothing to prepare. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know like there, there are a couple of programs that at least give, give you a certain level of detail. Uh, I remember when I was uh, preparing for uh, some of my PhD interviews, I got like a full list of the panel, uh, the website, like a link to their website, uh, what they do. I was also told areas that they are going to discuss. Uh, so at least you, you have an idea on, on how to, how to approach uh, the interviews but as you said every interview is different so you you need to ask questions um, let them know like ask them the format you know who you're going to interview with and all those things I think they are very crucial um, so very I, crucial. Um, so as you said it's very important for you to communicate your research interests and and in your experience how how best do you think applicants uh, can communicate their research interests and fit with a particular program? Hi. So the best way to do that is to be knowledgeable about the program and about what's going on in the field right now. Mm -hmm. So for candidates who interview with me, for example, they'd go to my website and they'd see that our last couple publications are things about the integrated biorefinery and how policy and science have to work together. So they'd probably read a few of our publications. They might read a couple publications that we've cited. They might go do a quick literature search to see what's been published in the past month or two. Maybe there's one cool article to mention. Um, so really the best way to, to seem that you're prepared and you're informed is to actually go do the legwork and prep for the interview um, and know the people. And if it's a committee, um, or there you're just looking at a department, look at kind of a survey of um, literature that's been written by the faculty in your area of interest. You don't need to know everyone's area. I mean, a department could have 50 members, but if there are five people working in your specific area, you know, read two or three papers from each person so that you can make a few notes and you can say, hey, I know um, this professor is working on this specific topic and this one's doing this one and I see connections between them in this way. Um, so you don't have to be overly prepared in the sense of knowing everything someone's done, but especially what they're working on now is really helpful. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that is, uh, that was perfectly clear. Um, so uh, uh, 
do we approach the following interview question uh tell me about yourself your your weaknesses uh, and then why do you want to do a phd um wow those are like three questions yeah three <laughs> questions in one <laughs> you know I, I would say the tell me about yourself question keep that short mm -hmm. um, pick one thing that you didn't mention in your statement of purpose that is relevant to the PhD and the program, then it's just something interesting. It's just a way to start a conversation. You know, it's it's not the end all be all question. It's yeah. actually just a way to get you going. Um, and then the other one, there's so much debate about this. I had a post about this. Yeah, I yeah, I read it. <laughs> I don't like the question, tell me about a weakness. Mm -hmm. I like the question, tell me about a weakness and how it could impact your PhD. Mm -hmm. um, and for example, one of my personal weaknesses is I overthink everything. Like to an annoying level, I am working on a paper right now and I think I've written the same sentence eight times. <laughs> <laughs> Enough already. And how could that impact my PhD? Well, it could really slow me down and it could cause me to be too indecisive in the lab to not yeah. be able to make that next decision on what experiment comes next and why. So then I would flip it to the advisor and be a little smart here and say, you know, so as, you know, as my advisor, I really hope you could challenge me to force me to make decisions and to decide what's important and show me how to make better kind of, um, faster points to mm -hmm. something so mm -hmm. use that question as a as an actual like strength and thing that you've thought of yeah yeah uh, I, I think that is that is very very uh vital and uh dr emanuela i hope you've 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 had the the responses um you don't want to uh, spend so much time you know talking about spending three four minutes on the tell me about yourself question it should be brief and usually uh, you would want to highlight things that are not already in your SOP and your 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 CV and all that. Um, I know there are a lot of resources out there on LinkedIn, but try and look at those that are really um, on point and and go with that. Um, 